So now we're going to be solving some equations, solving for x here. If you look inside the parentheses, there's a 2x minus 1, which can't be reduced at all. But what we can do, what we need to do, is use the distributive property. So that means multiply by 5 and multiply by 5. So a 5 times 2x will be 10x. And then 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. So when we were dealing with fractions earlier and we had something like 7 fourths, if I wanted to make the denominator become an 8, then I can multiply by 2. But I have to do the same thing to the top and the bottom. Essentially because those two can cancel each other out, the 7 fourths is still there. Okay, well the same idea is true with equations. Whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom when dealing with fractions. With equations, the idea is whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So, for example, if I want to get rid of this 2, I can subtract 2. You're allowed to. But then you have to do the same thing on both sides. Subtract 2 over here in order to cancel that 2, but then you have to subtract over here. So I have simplified this side. Notice right now I've got a 3x, a 2, a 10x, and a negative 5. I've got four terms. Well by doing this I've simplified it down to just three terms. So there's just a 3x on the left side now, there's 10x, and then you put these two together a negative 5 and a negative 2 makes a negative 7. Okay, now the goal is get x on one side of the equation and get all of the numbers on the other side of the equation. So what I can do is I can move the x's to this side. So I'm going to take this 10x and I'm going to cancel it from the right side. Well, in order to cancel it, I need to subtract. So subtract 10x in order to cancel this 10x over here. But like I said, you have to do the same thing to both sides. So subtract 10x from both sides. So over here, these are going to cancel. The only thing left on the right-hand side is negative 7. Uh, positive 3x minus 10x would be negative 7x. And now there's just one more step. In order to solve for x, we need to get rid of this negative 7. Right now, it is being multiplied with the x. So if I do the opposite of that, it will cancel it. If I do the opposite of multiplying, or in other words, divide by negative 7, then this negative 7 will cancel that negative 7, because negative 7 divided by negative 7 is just a 1. So it would leave behind 1 times x. All right, but if you do that on the left-hand side, you have to do that on the right-hand side. And so right here, this would become a 1 times x. So that means just x. A negative 7 divided by negative 7 is a 1. And so that is the answer, that x is equal to a 1. Let's use the same ideas over here. So first of all, distribute the negative 5. I love making the little distribute arrows. Looks like a little, he jumped into the air. Boing! Boing! So negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10. And then I'm just going to recopy everything else that's in the problem, including the equation sign. By the way, it's a good habit to get into when working with equations that you just work straight down instead of across. When people work across, they get things from one equation mixed together with another equation. It's not good, so just work down. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the numbers to the right-hand side, so I'm going to get rid of this 10. 
I'll cancel it by subtracting 10. Do the same thing on both sides. So let's see, on the right hand side there's a 2 minus 10, that means it's negative 8. On the other side there's a negative 5x and a positive 3x, the x's can be combined. Since it's negative 5 and negative 3, that combines to make negative 2x. Then we just have that last step where I need to get rid of this negative 2. Since it's sitting in front of x, that means it's being multiplied. So now do the opposite. So divide by negative 2, and you have to do the same on both sides. So over here, this leaves just 1x. Over here, a negative divided by a negative is positive. A 2 dividing into an 8 is 4, and so x equals 4. Same story over here. We've got the distributive property, so boing, boing. So a negative 3 times 9 is negative 27. Then it's a negative times a negative, so that's going to be a positive 3x and just recopy the 4. And on the other side, nothing to do right now, so just recopy 9x minus 3. So looking at this, I will put the x's on the left-hand side. You can put them on either side. Since there's already more of them over here, so there's 9 of them over here compared to 3 of them over there, then I'm going to collect them on the left-hand side. So that means I have to get rid of this 3x. So subtract 3x, subtract 3x. So 9 of them minus 3 of them leaves 6 of them. So 6x minus 3. And then these two numbers can be combined. You would need to subtract them. That's 23. And keep the sign negative. Okay, we've got two more steps. In order to solve for x, we need to get rid of this negative 3, so do the opposite, plus 3 to both sides. So that leaves just a 6x on the left. Combining a negative 23 with a positive 3 is negative 20. And then to get rid of the 6, so right now it's multiplying, do the opposite, divide. So we've got x is equal to negative 20 over 6. Well that one could be reduced. They are both even numbers, so I can divide by 2. If you divide a 20 by 2, that leaves a 10 and negative. If you divide this by a 2, that leaves a 3. So negative 10 thirds is the final answer for x. Okay, over here, this one's going to be good. Watch this. So first of all, I'm going to leave the x where it is. I have to get rid of this number, so the first thing to do is subtract 9 from both sides. On the right-hand side, there's 8 minus 9. 8 minus 9 is negative 1. In order to solve for x, I need to get rid of that 5, and I need to get rid of that 3. There's two ways you could look at it. You could look at it one at a time, where you go, okay, this one is dividing by 5, I'm supposed to do the opposite, so multiply both sides by 5. So that's going to get rid of those 5s. Then you'd have to get rid of the 3. So you have to do the opposite. Right now, the 3 is multiplying. Do the opposite. Divide by 3. So you could do it in those two steps, or whenever you have a fraction sitting in front of the x as it is, 3 over 5, you just use the reciprocal, 5 over 3. So multiply by 5 over 3 here, multiply by 5 over 3 here, and then the 3s will cancel each other, the 5s will cancel each other, and we've got just x is equal to 
negative 5 over 3.